Okay, Adam Woodhouse joins us, a postdoctoral fellow at UT's Institute for Geophysics. Adam, you were part of a study about the impacts of ocean warming and how it's impacting tropical plankton. What were your findings? So what we did is we, we looked back into the fossil record and what we've noticed is that over the last eight million years or so, these plankton communities have actually migrated uh, towards the equator to the equivalent of around 2000 miles or 3200 kilometers. So what we see from that is that the structure of the, the vertical structure of the ocean has changed over time. And that's as the earth has been cooling. And this is this cooling has been a very slow and gradual process. And uh, why that's interesting is that if our current trends that we're estimating are going to continue, then those structural changes, which took a long time, and it took these organisms, these plankton in particular, a very long time to adapt to them. If we suddenly snap back to a world from 8 million years ago, we, we can't predict what kind of changes that will have on these communities. What were you able to uh, determine as far as seeing a decrease in plankton in the tropical ocean? What would that do to the ecosystem there? So why this is important um, specifically to humanity is that in the modern ocean where we have these plankton communities, um, at the same time, we kind of have matching communities uh, in higher levels of the food chain, such as um, tuna, billfish, squid, and krill. And of course, these organisms are organism, organisms which billions of people around the globe uh, tend to rely on, especially within these low latitude coastal communities. So if we do revert back to one of these warmer worlds from, say, 8 million years ago in a very fast time, we may expect that these organisms, as well as the plankton, will move away from the equator again as things are warming up. Now, as the plankton move poleward, they're then moving into places that I either don't have as many plankton or don't have any at all. What would that do to those areas? Um, so within those areas, we may then be kind of having a, a species in invasion. These could be disrupting the ecosystems and the habitats of these or other organisms which may be located further from the equator, causing more disruptions. Adam Woodhouse, postdoctoral fellow at UT's Institute for Geophysics, thanks for joining us today.